Hello everybody, welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host Agostino Zinger. This is episode number 208-208-208. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Mofos, wherever you may be. For those of you guys out there who care about what day of the week it is and your mood is determined by outside factors such as the weather and such as things that you can't control such as the day, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's midweek. You don't have that long left to go now until you hit the weekend and you can start doing all the things that you want to do in your life, which is a bit depressing really, isn't it? if you think about it, you know, carefully or you meditate it on it a bit more than you have previously you're thinking damn it man i'm wasting all my time gearing up for a arbitrary day during the weekend to enjoy myself lift my hands up in the sky and sing hallelujah no do it right now it's only wednesday well done congratulations you've made it another week you made it another wednesday and now you're fast approaching thursday congrats hope you're doing well hope you're feeling fine oh how am i doing i'm doing great Thanks for asking. As you can see here, I've got a nice bottle of warm room temperature Evian, right? And if you're wondering what's inside it, it is Evian. It's not vodka. It's not anything else. Just plain old bottled water. I should have some sort of sponsorship here, in it, right? Drink Evian and it can sometimes help you in some way, shape or form. Please forgive me for keep looking at that side because that's where the monitor is, right? And I can't get enough of my face. But now, um, real talk, I hope you guys are doing well, and you're doing well, and you're doing well, and you're doing well. I'm doing fantastic. I've had a very strenuous morning. This, I've had a very strenuous morning, um, to say the least. I woke up about six in the morning, ended up getting out of my house at half six because I ended up downloading. Uh, does anyone else do the same thing I do when you're about to go for a workout? You end up downloading just this one more song you got to get on your flipping um, phone because you had to listen to that before you go in exercise i don't know why i do it to myself but i do it consistently so i woke up i found out gold link new album dropped so i had to download that and put that on my iphone then i found out that um t grizzly has a new album had to download that on my iphone then i found out tiger's new got a new album and even though i know it's gonna sound like i know it's all gonna sound like taste it's all gonna it's all gonna have the same bop as as go loco from yg but still i had to get that because i know it's gonna bang in the gym and then i found out that Young's Teflon's got a new album, I had to download that as well. Just a whole cascading of downloading songs. By the time I realized it was on my clock, I was like, oh no, it's so late. It's half six. Still, for me, it's late because it's half six in the morning. But for those of you guys that were in your bed, farting away under your duvet, you're probably like, rah, man, you woke up at half six to go run. Yes, I did. And I made my way over to um, the place where I go run in Stratford in the morning and end up running back and forward or up and down 10 times. Uh, for the equivalent of 200 meters and then yeah i feel i feel bad man i feel absolutely bad my body is really hanging but to make matters even worse at lunchtime when i finish i'm probably oh no not lunchtime actually after i finish work i'm gonna go to the gym and pump some weight so i'm doing two training sessions today which is something i don't usually do but seeing as it's a wednesday i thought why not give my body a little shock and get going so that's been my morning for the most part. Again, as I said, I'm hanging. I'm just, you know, hanging on in there. I've been using this app called Strava. I'm not sure if you guys check, check that out too. I've kind of jumped off the Nike um, Run Club um, um, wave. Just gets a bit annoying really um, to use in general. So I thought I would use my um, Strava app. And so far it's been okay. I've got in a quite a good decent amount of mileage this week. I've done about 4.9. It's telling me. I ran Monday, Wednesday. I'm going to run tomorrow and Friday too. So I'm going to get some long runs in over those couple of days and hopefully achieve the nice old 10 plus mile mark. And then from there, build, build, build until I get to like 20 miles and I'll be feeling flipping fine. Um, what else has been going on in my life? That's about it really, isn't it? Anything else? No, personally, no, not that really. Looking forward to going to Paris on the weekends. That should be fun. No DJ this weekend at all. Um, that's a bummer, but I'm gonna come back fresh for the next week. What else been happening? May United news, not really that much to talk about. We supposedly had a bid for Juan Bissaka rejected, but I don't believe it. I believe when I see it, we supposedly got some guy, some kid called Max Ahrens as a backup from Norwich, who looks pretty decent, judging by the YouTube clips I've seen. Um, there's news now that Ed Woodward is supposedly taking over all transfer deals because we've armed an ardor of a sporting director, which is never gonna happen. I think the sporting director thing was kind of a red herring. It's kind of to throw us off course. I think I think um, the club is always going to evaluate what happens on social media and the kind of general consensus. I think since 
people started talking about sporting director on social since the reception of us hiring an ex player wasn't received that well um and since the signings now have been you know the things that have dictated you know the current current conversation with my united fans no one's really talking about our style of play no one's talking about um where how questioning what social thinks we're going to play like um level of fitness the mentality of some of our players identifying some players that need to leave as opposed to signings that are coming in right i'd much i'd much rather we go into the season with a very thin squad that has to rely on some youth players to kind of you know flop to kind of add some support as opposed to going with experience but no one's asking those questions ever since we've been linked to players you know and millions of players under the sun everyone's just contrary on that so i wasn't surprised that suddenly now may not have leaked the news that edward was going to take over the transfers and he's going to be the one in charge of doing all the dealings because by and large everyone's kind of forgot about the sporting director thing and how important it is and we've kind of all concentrated on the individual signs that we need for our club which again goes to show just how divided and we divided i think and yeah just divided overall football fan base it's hard to kind of get everyone banded and that's why sometimes i really admire lower league clubs that kind of band around and kind of you know boycott a club like the blackpool right they they recently um, forced out their owner who they didn't really have a lot of time for so I like how they're able to do that because it's really difficult, like considering, especially if it's a big club, it's hard to get everyone to kind of agree um, on a right course of action because other people have different objectives that they have in mind. Like, for instance, Man United season ticket holders, most of which are on waiting lists, don't give a sod about who's in the boardroom. They just want to get to matches. So if people start boycotting or start abandoning their season ticket, you know, whatever for the new season, there's going to be a whole queue of people lining up ready to take their place. So it's hard to really do those kind of protests. It's hard even to kind of get everyone to agree of who's to blame, really, when it's really obvious in Ed Woodward's case, you know, he's been in charge or he's been at, he's been on his seat appointing managers for, what, six years now, maybe seven years, and he's got every one of them wrong and still his job isn't in, under threat which is very bizarre in that regard. Um, yeah, just a general kind of uh, an in, uh, a whole clusterfuck of mismanagement has led to the situation that we're in now. And hopefully, somehow the signs are going to paper over the cracks, but I don't think so. I think there's too many well-run clubs in the Premier League to really allow us to get away with that again. Um, we won't get away with it ever again, I think, until we sort our stuff out. But, you know, you never know. Crazy things have happened in life. But um, let's not get fixated on that, because if I start talking about United, I'm going to get bummed out and start getting annoyed and stuff and start, you know getting a bit weird so let's get into some topics that i have listed some interesting articles that i've read over the week on the internet that i want to now speak to you guys about on the internet how crazy is that okay so number one number one number one as you guys know i've got i've got post festival blues i'm still a bit in the mood about you know junction two and about how amazing it was and a great time i had me a friend having a good time jumping fist bumping fist pumping enjoying electronic music um, in and amongst other people who also enjoy electronic music. And it got me thinking about how I spend my time um, recreationally, yeah? leisurely, my leisurely time. I like to go for a drink. I like to hang out with friends. I like to just, you know, shoot the shit, have a bit of banter, joke around, right? But most of my going out centers around clubbing experiences because for the most part, my Fridays and Saturdays are usually taken up with me DJing in random bars and comes around Trafford and Leightonstone. So the times I do go out, I tend to go out on Saturdays or Fridays on my own because I don't really have time during the week to go out because I'm working or because I'm prepping for my sets and stuff. So the normal time that people go out for drinks after work, let's say from Wednesday to Friday, I'm never really around. So on Saturday night, usually people are hanging out with their partners or hanging out with their friends and family. So they don't really want to go out to things I do want to go out to. And plus the things I want to go out to cost money. But because I make money on the Friday and Saturday, I usually kind of offset it and try and I'm not... I'm not worried about spending twenty pounds to get into Mix Garage, Corsica Studios, The Yard, name any other club out there. But sometimes it can get a bit much, right? Spending that kind of amount of money going out all the time, it can get much. And then the other problem I have as well is that the local, you know, builders pubs in my area aren't necessarily the best place to go to, you know, if you want to just come jam. It's not really the right kind of vibe. It's it's cool for what it is. I'm a big I'm I'm a big fan of hanging out in kind of you know the quote-unquote blue collar bars and stuff I, i'm i'm not against it if you guys know me you would know that you know i'm always perched up in my local weather spoons here and there after work getting a beer or something or just chilling reading a book whatever it may be i'm not against it but sometimes you want to mix things up you want to be you know you want to be a nice um 
eclectic environment for this for for lack of a better term so i was thinking the other day what could i do where's a place where's a spot that i could kind of make my own right it kind of goes back to my you know my thesis that you know alibi it wasn't the fact that alibi went that was the sad thing it was the fact that whatever alibi represented was never rep- was never replaced right no one ever came along and kind of tried to replicate what alibi did and try and do it their own way everyone just kind of let that thing die and they moved on to like craft par bubs and gastro pubs and shit but no one's been able to replicate that kind of feel and the feel that alibi had was that kind of community feel right the idea that you knew all the bartenders you knew the owners you knew the security guards you knew people that worked at the door you knew the people that came in there the patrons the punters whatever you want to call them and they were the same people that kind of cycled in week in week out week in week out we don't really have that most of the time right you might have that in your local pub but for instance you know they're, they're not really your people they've been there much longer than you they kind of have a stake in the pub you don't really have anything in it so I was thinking the only way to do it is to pay, right? Is to kind of go to a private members club. So I was doing a bit of research and I got a list up of loads of private members clubs that I'm kind of interested of maybe applying into. And this kind of got me thinking about Shoreditch House, right? Number one, because Shoreditch House, for anyone that's, you know, been part of the scene um, in the very beginning, will know that Shoreditch House was the first kind of spot that everyone kind of um, flocked to when we were first kind of getting acquainted with the scene and getting our foot in the door and trying to, you know, make a move and stuff and catch a vibe, you either went there because you, there was some kind of brand partnership that they allowed you to go on their list. You went there for a meeting, again, for a company you're working for, usually a cool company. If they want to impress a client, they'll, they'll book a shortage house room or whatever it may be. Or you just was able to finesse it because a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend got in a list. But either way, the first time you go into Shoreditch House, you realize, okay, cool. Even though this is annoying, even though there's some wanky people in there, even though it's full of donuts, even though it's full of hipsters and stuff, when you went in there, when you got into that lift and you got on top, up to the top floor, you're like, cool, I get it now. You understood the hype, right? Number one, because it's, again, because it's a private members club, it's not super busy. Because um, it's a private members club, it's a very interesting a uh, group of people in there, interesting clientele. So if you're about networking, if you want to smooth and all that sort of shit, it's right for you. Bring your business cards, bring your best smile, put on some nice um, aftershave, chuck a couple of minutes in your mouth and go and connect. But the most important thing that I thought was really cool was that if you just want to go in and just catch a vibe and just chill, have a couple of drinks with your friend and catch up or just go there solo, read a book, catch a little snooze, have a shower, hit the gym, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect for that stuff and more. And again, I think maybe the older you get, the more you start to realize that these home comforts, these things that are going to cost you a lot up front, are going to pay back. Are going to pay you back in dividends on the back end. So I was looking at the membership rates of Shoreditch House and thinking, you know what, I want to get involved in it. And it was kind of making sense to me. Again, I think the older you get, they always say the older you get, the more conservative you become. I think I'm starting to get older, I get the more susceptible I am to splashing out on things that should be splashing out on at all, right? If I want to build a business, if I want to become a five or one percent or a five percenter, or I want to have a life that I want to have, I'm probably going to have to forego this stuff. But it's fun to kind of entertain in your mind regardless. So this is the membership cost, right? I know it costs a lot cheaper if you're under 27, but this is a, the, the page for the mem- shortage membership uh, platform. It's got a seven step process, right? About you, number one, your photo, number two, your work, number three, uh, your pro, your prosperous, pro, propers, pro, prospers, pro, prospers. What's that? Is that your referrals or whatever? Why are you number five, payment number six, and submit number seven? And it says here the following. I hereby apply for membership of Solar House. If accepted, I agree to be bound by the following rules. Please note the section is completed in order for, uh, for submitting to the committee. A clear recent headshot must be included. Your application must include the name and email address of two pro persons who are existing members. I don't have them. Applicants must apply to the house closet to their primary residence. All information shall be treated in confidence. This form will be taken uh, around 10 minutes to complete. Under 27 applicants must be under 27. So the price, the local house price is 1,130 1, for local house to access shortage house facilities only. And every house is 1,700. Under 27 is 720 and under 27, every house is 950. So again, I probably should have got this earlier when I was under 27 because then you would have just been able to pay that. I wonder if you paid, yeah, well, you would have paid that forever, right? The 970 or just because until you're under 27, I have no idea. But regardless, um, 
it looks cool it's a place that i've always kind of wanted to go to and i think in general i just like the idea of being able to go to like a private members club and just chill out right with my mates when i want to um again it's not it's not maybe the most important thing it's not something that i have to do in my career now it's not something that i need in my life but it's something that i would like to have again just have somewhere to go that you know you can just chill and you don't need to be bothered by security it's not gonna be annoying not gonna play shit music i don't know man it would would be i think it would be quite a cool thing to do um let me see if someone's got like a video of it shortage house uh membership i think it'd be quite cool to do Do, 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 do. is this young lady here speaking about it here let's see what she has to say addy dooley addy doyle this is regarding Charlotte's house membership. Let's see what she has to say. Ooh, let's skip it forward a little bit. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Let's see what she has to say. Get to it. Get to the point. Come on, woman. Okay, let's see what she has to say about it. There's one in New York. Mm-hmm. There's one in Dumbo. Mm-hmm. There's Chicago. There's Toronto. There's Lutz. I've actually never stayed at a Soho house. They have hotel rooms at some locations. From what I hear, it's really nice. I'll be checking out. See what she has to say about it. I'll sure to blog about it. From the looks of it, it looks stunning. So when you apply, there's a kind of a rolling admission sort of thing. They get applications and they meet. I think it's three times a year. I think it's in May, August. January when they decide to let members in or put people on a wait list. So I applied in New York City. I have a member. You need to get a letter of recommendation from one person who's a member and then a second recommender that just kind of signs off on the fact that they- So I don't have one. Rec- so you need two recommendations, which I don't have. I have one person in my list of people who can help me out. Um, who would I have? Um, I might have one person that I know that won't show house for me, but I don't know not somebody else. But anyway, let's hear what you're supposed to say. When you get that, you write a series of essays. I think you just write about your professional experience, what you would bring to the table as a member, what they offer at the house. So you can't get in unless you're with a member, and a member can bring up to three people. And they mm-hmm. have pretty strict rules about phones. You're not allowed to take any photos. You're not allowed to be on the phone in the house. You can take it outside. You have to wear casual attire. You can't wear, like, a suit. No suits. They do have a photo booth, though, which I'm sure you can see a ton of people on Instagram posting in the photo booth. The reason I joined was because I wanted to get involved in that community of people. There's a lot of artists. There's a lot of filmmakers. I'm an actress. As I was just graduating from college, I was studying acting. I got my BFA in acting. They do a lot of really cool events that kind of get members to meet each other and to, they have great discussions and speakers. And I love the ones that they've been doing at West Hollywood. There's like a whole women hmm. empowerment, like women entrepreneurs. Interesting. Women I'm down with that. Film. Remember, you get to see all these movies for free. They do like food and beverage discounts for people who are under 27. They, okay, skip ahead. I also wanted to join because it's really a wonderful external office for me. It's a place where I can True. do meetings. It's a place where I can go work if I need to get out of my office space in my apartment. I just need like a change of scenery. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, let's let's um let's get off it now because I think she's speaking too much about this nonsense. Um, let's put this down there. Cool. All right. I feel her. I think she's got. I think she's made some really valid, 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 valid points. Um, let me get this stuff off the screen first. I'm rubbish at using OBS, but anyway, let's get us on this. So, anyway, she's made some really good valid points regarding um going to a private members club, and I think there's something I've been thinking about a lot recently. Again, just because at the moment I'm kind of in this weird space where. I like going out. I like doing the whole clubbing thing that I'm doing. But again, because I DJ so often, it kind of takes the shine off of clubbing. And really off the back of this Junction 2 festival thing that happened a couple of weeks ago, we went, sorry, last week, I've now kind of decided in my head mentally that I'll probably stop going to clubs in general or clubbing as much as I did previously, unless it's going to be to see someone really stellar or someone that you don't usually see in London. Or if you want to go see someone in a particular space, it's really interesting too. Um, I'll probably do that. But I won't, I won't go as much as I did previously. And I'll just save my money to go to festivals. Because, of course, you get everything like in one. And because of Junction being so great, 
we're probably thinking about going to Deck Mantle in Amsterdam. There's, I've had my faith has been restored in the ability for festival promoters to put on an actual good electronic music festival centered mostly around DJs. So with that being said, and with the my my time be occupied DJing in uh, Stratford for the most part and doing that whole thing in Leytonstone, or whatever, I don't really have the time or the ability to go out as much as I did previously. But I do also want to go somewhere that's kind of cool that might have a good community, that might link up with some people, that I might have somewhere just to kind of just rest and relax, whatever it may be. And also like the like she like this um Abigail mentioned, it's a good little home like home office, home away from home, off uh, an office out of your home. Sorry from point of saying. So at the moment when I'm working freelance and doing my thing, I usually have to go to like um the Ace Hotel here in Liverpool Street. That's quite cool. It's a great place to go to. Um you can usually get um, some good Wi-Fi in there. They've got good comfy chairs. Sometimes the desks are usually taken up because they usually do classes and whatever in there. But for the most part, there's loads of room in the main foyer for you to kind of like sneak around, sit down, make sure your laptop's charged before you go because there's not a lot of plugs sometimes in the seats that you sit in. But for the most part, it does a job, right? They've got a good menu. The waiters are really nice. It's just a cool in- environment to go chill in. And it's, again, only 10 minutes down the road from Liverpool Tree Station. So it's one train straight back home for me. But I want to go somewhere where I can just do that all the time, right? When I just want to go out of, out of my house, I can just go somewhere to go and jam it because usually the bars and cafes around Shafford are really busy. There's not a lot of room to go sit down, so you really have to come out of your house before 10 a.m. Same with um, Ace Hotel. You can't really leave it until about 1 because by that time, it's already ram-packed with everyone that wants to work already there at the moment. So but the ability to have a shortage house membership would go a long way in kind of getting that kind of sorted. But again, you know, I'm not I'm not really fussed about where it is. It'll be great if it was Shoreditch House, but considering it's, uh, I think, what did I say, 1,100 kind of roughly or or 1,500 to go get a membership plus it's, I think, 400 pound up front per year. So it's quite a bit to kind of do. But again, if I save up again, I'm pretty sure I can probably achieve that. No problem. Um, and then I looked at, there's a big list I actually found actually of other places that also do, um, that are also private members club and they're sort of ranked by prices. Kind of quickly go through some of those now. Again, I'm not too sure if it's wanky as well. I don't know how that's going to come off, but again, the older you get, the more disposable income you have, you start to maybe do away with certain you know things that you don't do because again i'm not signed to that many classes my gym is fairly cheap i kind of you know i usually I, i'm gonna have a bike soon too so i'll cycle most places so there won't be that need to be spending as much money on other things that people do i don't smoke i drink but only when i go out so i don't spend that much money on things so if i can funnel that kind of funding drinking leisurely activities into a shortage house part membership and again, you could always invite a couple of friends down. They'll be more than happy to come down with you and buy the first round or two because they're happy to go into the house. And again, it's a good spot to kind of meet your friends. I think it'd be quite a cool thing to do. Um, anyway, let's um, go down the list. So it's a list from Business Advisor of the 25 of London's most exclusive private members clubs ranked by prices. And again, this is very handy for me. Um, London's private membership circuit has come a long way since the days of Stuff and Gentleman's Club. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's, let's go down the list. Number one, 150 a year, I'm assuming, is called um, dis, uh, Disrepute. Disrepute in Soho. Disrepute is a hidden gem nestled in within an opulent Soho basement. Offers a carefully created cocktail menu and atmospheric space, perfect for the secret late night sessions. If it's, it is one of the most reasonably priced members bars in London, membership privileges include priority reservation, the ability to book in parties of up to 12 and free access to special events, talks and masterclasses. The club says it is a members bar, not in a conventional sense and applications are welcome from people, all backgrounds and persuasions. Non-members are also welcome to book a table subject to availability. So not really a traditional members bar in that respect. It's more so you get a membership card if you pay extra where you can get priority booking and stuff and you can walk in and get a table whenever you need be. That's quite fine. It's in Soho, so it's a bit far from me. Um, I'll prefer Shoreditch House because that's nearer to where I live. If I have to go to Soho, I have to pass Shoreditch, etc. But, you know, it, it, that could be a good option. Then number two, we have, it, it jumps up from 150 to 500. I think this is a base level price that people have. And I, I'm assuming this 150, this is 500 per year. And I'm assuming you maybe renew it every year. They probably ask you if you want to renew it. Um, hopefully, they don't just take that direct debit out again. Imagine, imagine you don't know your Christmas shopping and your direct debit comes out January 1st. You'd be crying. So anyway, it's called um, Qua... Quavidas, Quavidas in Soho, nice kind of interior there. Um, so Quavidas in Soho is easily recognizable by its iconic neon street sign. 
um, is another Soho Members Club haunt. Its club consists of a first floor bar, lounge, and dedicated members restaurant, which serves quintessentially British cult cuisine. Again, I'm not too keen on British cuisine, so I don't care about that. There's a lot of Members Club in Soho, and I guess it kind of started, all, it must have all started off in Soho, that kind of overall scene. Um, again, not for me personally. Um, under 30s benefit from a discount yearly rate of 300 quid. Um, the club doesn't have a blanket policy for membership and says it, that it instead looks at case by case applicants, accepting people without heirs and graces who are interesting and happy to be themselves. That sounds pretty cool, right? At them for them for the most part. I'm not mad at them for that. That is the Queen Venus in Soho. Again, most of them in Soho. There's another one. Um L S Cargoat in Soho again. I love that staircase. It's fucking beautiful. And it's probably a great Instagram picture that. Um, you know, also also like about what the girl mentioned earlier, this this Abbey girl. Um, I like the fact that Soho House doesn't let you take pictures. I remember that actually in George House. You can't take pictures. Well, you can of you and your friends, but you can't have the flash on and shit. It's a private members club. People don't want to know. People don't want to be known that they're in there. It's sort of like the private members version of Bergheim in that respect. So I quite like that. Um, that privacy aspect of it. The fact that you can. It's about talking and communicating the fact that they have community events so you can link up with other people network too that's quite cool it might be a bit weird though that if i just turn up and i'm the guy there and i'm a you know marketing manager community manager of some sort you know what i mean people there might have more fancier jobs but again it's it's a, it's, it's a place to start i guess um doing that whole thing um and then the other one of so that's else carl going shoreditch it's 450 per year plus a 250 pound joining fee and it says here the following set in a georgian townhouse in the heart of soho above london's oldest french uh, restaurant el escargot el, el, el escargot right the chic upstairs club is accessed by a psychedelic carpet sparrow staircase it is a secretive hideout away from the hustle and bustle of the capital there is an area of electricity to the club which offers its members access to the series of private rooms including the salon noir salon bleu and salon rouge which regulatory which regularly hosts performances and general debauchery under 28 can obtain a reduced membership of 250 pounds if you don't have a pro a, a prosperer you may be asked to visit the club and meet with one of the members team for a drink and a brief introduction which is awesome i like that because i don't have a prosperer i might know somebody that i have a shortage again having to do all that shit like reaching out to somebody it's a bit gay in it i wouldn't want to do that really i want to just like have membership or not have being able to have a meeting and them interview and stuff would be quite cool i don't mind that but the idea of having to reach out to somebody put a facebook state or stuff oh does anyone have a membership and then have people so have them it's a bit virtue signaling because number one you're letting people know that you're interested about having a membership in so in so house and then it's them having to then reach out to you so you're having to hope it's virtue signaling that you're gonna get a membership or you're on your way to applying and it's also virtue signaling that you know people that have membership as well so it kind of gives your circle of friends a kind of cool glaze like oh so sickening this stuff isn't it but again it has everyone has to do the kind of dance and then the last one i'll mention here that we move on is a blacks club soho 525 pound per year with a 250 joining fee nestled in the heart of soho blacks club is famed for its supper clubs that is now hosted in at least once a month with a focus on either wine fashion or art its website states the theme is always celebrated in style with special menus and plenty of wine always a popular night with members there's a one-off joining fee of 250 and an annual membership cost 525 while a dual or couple membership is 750 meanwhile under 30 is benefit from this kind of 300 and they um overseas can pay 350 annually the full membership cost can be found online here okay that was pretty nice too they were quite stuffy looking don't it but just taking a quick glance there's chelsea arts club here there's albertson chelsea again there's chelsea again the soho again bloomsbury soho soho covent garden mayfair shoreditch okay cool but I think the shortage for me is the one to go with. Again, I'm just thinking about doing it now. I haven't decided as well on where I should go to and what I should pay. But again, if anyone has any advice on those kind of things and you know anyone or whatever that can hook it up or that knows someone that knows somebody, that please let me know. That would be much, much appreciated. But again, I'm just thinking about it, man. Again, I'm not too sure if it's the right thing to do. I'm not sure if that's what I need in my life right now. It probably isn't um, if I'm doubting it. But overall you know why not man why not try and stick my head in the fucking private members club circle and again like i said it's just it's just more of a convenience thing for me right i go out quite often i want somewhere to go and just chill with some friends have a booze have a little boogie network have have, have some good chats and then kind of go home right and it's, and it's it's a good distance for everyone to go back home to right shoreditch house um right in the middle of shoreditch liverpool street bethnal green 
Old Street, all that stuff is right around the corner. Um, no real excuses really for people not to come out and kind of hang out and shit. And I think Pete, your friends will be super stoked if you got a membership, man. You'll be the most popular kid in your fucking circle of friends. Imagine, just imagine, you end up getting the Soho House Connect, right? You, you are the guy that everyone's like, oh man, can you put me in the list, please? I want to come down, mate. I want to come down. You're like, yeah, brother, I know you want to come down. I know you want to come down. <laughs> so that's for me in that one. Let's see how that works or how that goes. Hopefully, I get that work worked out within the next um, few months and stuff. And if I do, I will, of course, keep you guys updated. So let's move on here. Ba, 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 ba. What else we have on your list? Um, Frank Ocean Day's interview. Really cool interview. I recommend you check that out. Number one, just for his fashion and what and his kind of grill choice. I'm a big fan of. And I'm also a fan of something that I might copy. Um, something that I wouldn't really say out loud, but fuck, it's a podcast. I mean, I might copy is the little earring here on your upper earlobe. I think I might go for that. I was considering it for, before, but I was kind of scared about how much it would hurt because there's a lot of cartilage here around the top of your earlobe and stuff. But I think that looked pretty cool. I've always wanted to get another earring another um, my, another piercing here on my earlobe just next to the piercing that i have here just another a little one just to kind of maybe put a diamond on but i think one up there might do my work really well after seeing frank ocean this interview of his on days magazine um is titled the world according to frank ocean where loads of different people in his life or um, cr cr um collaborators peers friends people that are fans of his ask him questions such as john waters janet mock billy porter and many more and yeah he's got an interesting grill choice here at the top so he's got this awesome uh stray rats tea i'm not sure it's out yet at the moment but he's got this great grill which i think he's a show for on his instagram so it's it's kind of uh, a grill i think it's silver and it's kind of got little holes in it it reminds me of like a zaha hadid kind of architecture sculpt an architecture kind of design form whatever loads of different little holes in it they look really cool see he's, he has got a second one on the top see i think i might copy frank Ocean's earrings no <laughs> no shame in that whatsoever um he has some interesting points and view and stuff um the interview is pretty basic for the most part but i'm going to go through some of his pictures again just to kind of go through some of his fashion choices i like some of the trousers here and the loafers the t-shirt and the jewelry and the hat is pretty cool i wonder what is the hat by the hat is awesome right um I really like that. I like that he's got the Louis Vuitton shoes on from Virgil that he designed that look a lot better now. They've been worn a few times. It's weird that when you see stuff on runways, um, they don't necessarily strike you that well. Sometimes, you, for instance, when I saw the Balenciaga Triple S's for the first time on the runway, I loved them straight away. I was like, yeah, I need those shoes in my wardrobe. I hope Mike is so high I could wear them. But when I saw the Virgil kind of like basketball trainers for Louis Vuitton, I, necessarily, I didn't necessarily think they'd look that great. They reminded me of like, you know, I don't know, trainers that I'd see some kid from LA wearing, right, with skinny jeans and shit. But now I've seen them worn a lot more often and people are kind of wearing them in their own kind of way. They don't have that kind of stiffness to them a little bit. I don't know. They just look a lot more, um, you know, they look a lot more versatile than they maybe looks on a runway. Maybe it's because, again, because he's wearing the all black pair. I'm not sure. The, the silver pair that I saw recently that I think Playboy Carti wore during his look or the other pair that I saw, the orange pair from maybe that Don't, so don't See where I'm not sure those ones will actually work that well with most people but i think the ones that uh, frank ocean's wearing at the moment the kind of all black suede is it suede or velvet or nubuck i'm not sure what finish that is but they look pretty cool and again it's a kind of classic sort of like tennis shoe basketball shoe model so you can't really go wrong with that kind of uh model really regardless of the brand um you've got another cool image here of him in black and white photography by billy van der Peer, which is obviously says why it's so cool and that's so was that a Prada shirt there that everyone's wearing at the moment? Yeah, it's a printed Prada shirt. Oh, I didn't know it had a leather um collar as well. That looks fucking awesome. Okay, it explains why everyone loves that shirt, then isn't it? But yeah, going back to the interview, fairly standard for the most part. Um he speaks quite well about the whole finessing of the record label, the into the kind of conversation that we're all well aware of because you know ASAP Rocky kind of recently um told everybody, but we'll get all Frank Ocean stands new of the whole occasion before, but I recommend you check it out. Pretty cool interview. I'm not sure what this says about the uh, the likelihood of us getting any new music. Frank Ocean does mention in this interview that um, there's going to be a is it Channel Orange vinyl is going to come out very soon, but I'm not sure if this means because he's he's done quite a lot of press recently, a lot more press than he's done maybe in the last few years. So I'm not sure this means he's due to release some new music, a documentary, a show he's working on, a collaborative album, a live tour. I'm not sure what it is, but. Again, I'm hoping we get some new material from Frank very soon because again, he's one of our one of the one of the one of our most interesting musical artists we have at the moment, right? He's um he's unabashedly um 
he's unabashedly aloof, you know, eccentric, um, pretentious. I love it. I love it. Because I, I think he's well aware of how pretentious he comes across and he just leans into it, right? He doesn't try and pretend to be the everyday man or the common dude. He really does try to like separate himself from everybody else. Like, I'm on my own island. I'm this guy. I do if, I do the things that I want to do in the way I want to do it and so on and so forth. So I recommend you check that interview out. It's fairly cool. Um, second, we have here an actual another interview too. I think another interview with Bad Bunny. I'm also on, on Interview Magazine. Uh, no, sorry, an interview magazine, sorry, instead of uh, Dazed. This is a cool interview because I think it's Rosalie that interviews him, right? Rosalia, um, another kind of really influential Latino. What's well, she Spanish for the most part? No, she's Spanish, she's yeah, an artist. Whereas Bad Bunny's from Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. But it's a really cool interview. Um, more so because I, I wasn't very familiar with this story about Bad Bunny being rejected from a nail salon. Um, he tried to get nails there, because, but they told him because he wasn't a man, he couldn't get his nails done there. Um, so um, this is a story that they're talking about here. I mentioned it to you and read a little bit of it, the interview, so you can kind of get a bit of a background on it. It's by Interview Magazine. But again, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes if you guys to read, so I don't have to like uh, remember what the title is. This is Bad Bunny and Rosalia. Um, so she says here, Bad Bunny says the following. It's funny. I discovered little by little that I don't like fashion. And Rosalia um, answers back. And why is that? Fashion is one thing, but style is another. Sometimes uh, big companies say, look at that, cabron. Um, he loves fashion. Look at that fucker, basically. I don't follow any designers. Everything has their, everyone has their style. And your style explains a lot about you, who you, who you are. You feel me? I've had style since childhood. So I like to dress how I feel. But maybe I get carried away by some trends, right? Which, which is, I think, not really something that he should say. I think he dresses amazing. I don't think he should say that because I think I like. Again, I like his um, way of dressing. It's a bit eccentric for me. It's kind of in a J, J Balvin kind of level of eccentricity. It's a bit out there for me personally. But I like the fact that he that you generally do get the sense that he wakes up and however he feels, whether his sunshine or rain or happy or sad, whatever it is, it kind of reflects immediately in his clothing. He's always adding little trinkets and things that he wears with his rings, nails, earrings, necklaces, bags, strap, straps, whatever it may be. I love how extra he goes on with everything he says. But the other bit is what kind of made me sad, right? And he says, yeah, Rosalia, um, knowing how to dress is an art. Whenever I see you, I think this guy has swag and you paint your nails. Where do you like to get them done? And Bad Bunny says, not in Spain because they don't know, they don't want to let me do it. Which is very interesting how very conservative Spanish culture is concerning these kind of things. And it links to an article that kind of expands on it, which I had no idea about. Again, because maybe because I'm not a Spanish-speaking dude, this kind of news uh, passed me by. But the headline says, Bad Bunny says he was refused service at a nail salon for being a man, um, which is an interesting kind of prejudice. Um, Bad Bunny had a, had a, has a passion for wacky wardrobe choices and is part of the reason why Puerto Rican rap has become the poster boy for Latin trap movement. Whether it's his impressive graphics or love for bold prints, the, the Borica rapper continues to turn heads. Uh, but... El Conio Malo's um, eccentric sense of style isn't sitting well with everyone for some time now. The I Like It style has been sporting colorful manicures all the way back to the summer 2017. Yeah, he's, but he's got really long ones now. I think, I think there was a, a photo shoot with him recently. He has some fucking daggers on him. Uh, he rocked yellow nail polish at Premios Duento, whatever that is, and more recently painted his nails um, in an Estamos Bien video. Estamos Bien. Uh, though plenty of male pop stars and entertainers have painted their nails in the past years, the choice has drawn ire of plenty of fans who have leveled homophobic insults at Bad Bunny and questioned his sexuality. Now Benito Martinez Ocasio is facing criticism again after he attempted to get his nails done at Salon but was turned away. While on tour in Europe, there's a lot of text here, just tell you, get to the point, these people, man. While on tour in Europe, Bad Bunny went to the um, Ana Rodeo Salon in Oviedo, Spain. Of Yedo, Spain, to get his nails done, but was refused service. On Monday, he recounted this incident on Twitter in Spanish. I just wanted to tell you that all I went to do the shit is best get my nails done, manicure in color, and they told me no because I'm a man. I don't know what to think, but it seems very, very unfortunate. Haha, <laughs> what year is it? Fucking 1960. What, what do you call this? Uh, though most fans were quick to applaud him. One follower was unhappy with his response to the homophobic attack, pointing out the sexism in his remarks. Dude. When they asked you if you are gay because your nails, you responded, whoever has that process should bring their wives to my house. They'll see how I'll make them. <laughs> I love that response. <laughs> whoever, whoever doubts my sexuality should bring their wives to my house. They'll see how I'll make them raise my kids. 
what are you in 1960 which is very interesting it reminds me of a quote from um Ibrahimovic remember when Ibrahimovic is talking to some lady and then she says something along the lines of like oh are you gay and he, she says oh bring a sister to my house and I'll show you if I'm gay or not or something it's some wild quote <laughs> <laughs> Bring out, I like Bad Bunny even more of this thing man let Bad Bunny get his nails done but yeah it's a pretty cool interview regardless the sorry the Dazed and Confused one um no sorry the, the one with Interview Magazine or Interview Magazine is uh, Rosalie in, is interviews um Bad Bunny and again, there's something to be said about um, artists or peers interviewing other peers. I know it can't happen all the time. I know it's something that has to be coordinated between both camps. Record labels get involved, managers, and it's, it's a lot of all ball late to get this, this stuff done. I'm pretty sure for the magazine that's pl- publishing the interviews, but I wish we had more of these. And I guess it goes to show why it shows like even below the belt by Brendan Shaw, why a lot of people might think, you know, they might not rate Brendan. Why sometimes his fighter interviews are a lot better than some of the other journalists because, again, he's an ex-fighter, right? He's been in the ring. He knows what they've been through. There's a level of respect there that they you're never going to get from a journalist that's trying to get, you know, just trying to get the fighters slipping up on some words or to get you in a gotcha moment. You're never going to get that. So I really wish we had more of those. Again, it's something we're not going to because if you're an artist worth your salt or worth any kind of self-pride or, you know, you really value your position, you're not going to lower yourself to that level of... Pr- journalist or reporter in that sense right you're going to remain somewhat detached from it and just comment on stuff from afar but you don't necessarily want to go sit down and interview your peers because again it might just get you itching to get back in the ring and stuff as well but i wish that happened would happen more often but it doesn't so what can we do but that's an interview on interview magazine it's called uh rosalia gets beneath the shades of bad bunny really cool interview it really goes it goes a long way to kind of really explain why he's got such an appeal why i'm a big fan of his why that album that came out was maybe one of the best albums of 2018 hands down recommend check out even if you don't understand spanish you can just feel that this guy speaking from the heart and then when you go and just look at the translation you're like oh okay this is why people love bad bunny amazing artist one of the best and again just a great character to have in music at the moment super eccentric just does his own thing and again, imagine imagine being Bad Bunny. Imagine being that kind of effeminate looking, but still having that macho, that macho energy. Um, doing it in a very machismo um, environment, such as like you know in Latin America, and as well as doing it in such a in such a conservative country like Spain, right, where they don't really take kindly to those kind of eccentricities. Really, they kind of you know ask you if you're a gay, question your sexuality. Um, turn all your business even though you're a big star right imagine what that must be like everyone in spain must know who he is so for a salon to turn him away because they think he's being gay is another level it goes to show just how catholic that country is so to be how to be how he is in the place that he is and where he's grown up and the things that he's seen takes a lot of bravery takes a lot of backbone and again goes to show just how much of a valued artist he is and how how much we should protect him at all costs so re- again recommend you check out even if you don't know who bad bunny is check out the interview it's really cool um next on the list we have here a cold war spring summer 20 okay a cold war sammy ross's brand has gone from strength to strength for some people they're upset for others they're like you know what this guy's smashing it and i have to be one of those people that say he's smashing it i think i made a tweet the other day um when the show was on that i now have no doubt in my mind that Simon ross is building the next big men's the next big fashion empire in the uk maybe rivaling the likes of burberry and maybe equivalent to the likes of amani and stuff where it just kind of churns out collections year in year out they might not be the most thought-provoking they might not be the most innovative but he has an, a way of appealing to the mass market and still appealing to his niche and just delivering season in season and i think the the kind of positions the position moves they've done the little pivots they've done the introduction of new pieces here and there have really made me aware that i think um a cold was the truth i think Sammy ross knows that what the fuck he's doing and i think he's got his head screwed on really really well and again i'm not saying anything that's surprising i think people most people that follow fashion should know this or do know this and even the ones that are haters are kind of silently aware that this guy has his finger on the post both um you know conceptually and commercially he's got those things married up really really well and he's doing god's work so recently they had a show in print works in london i tried to get a ticket for it they sent out a mass kind of communication people to kind of sign up to get tickets for it because it's a big space i'm assuming they need to fill it out as much as possible unfortunately i didn't get them they all kind of 
ran out, but they did live stream him. Has he? I think he's live streamed all these shows, you know, since the beginning, which is goes again. It's easy to do it nowadays because you know um, we live in a digital age. You can just set up an iPhone and live stream it on off your Instagram. I know, but to go to that length to always kind of catalog and archive your designs and have like a kind of you know a record of what you've done this goes a long way again to allow people all around the country all around the world to see your collection too in real time goes a long way too and goes to show just how far ahead he's thinking of the brand um that idea is not something that everyone does so again it goes to show just how much of his head is screwed on but anyway um it was it was available on live stream for you to check out um i did check it out in, in parts but then i went back and kind of visited it and then looked over the pictures and so far i think he's really done a good job and judging by the review on here from vogue it seems that they agree too i haven't read it so far but let's have a read through and kind of go through the collection and we can kind of pick out some pieces that i thought were interesting so um this is from uh sarah sarah moa on vogue runway she, she says the following regarding samuel ross uh, Samuel scooped up the 150,000 British Fashion Council GQ Men's Wear Design Fund prize on the evening. He'd just shown his collection, which which is honestly one of his best collections, I think, in the cavernous Printworks venue in London's East End. Ross and his popular brand of Cold War need no introduction for the millions of boy followers internationally. He's living proof that nothing succeeds like success. Um, a leader who emerged onto the design streetwear scene after working with Virgil Abloh off white and an important trailblazer for the talent agent generation of young British, young black british creatives who are explosively breaking through into london menswear from multiple directions now he's going to one i'm sure knowing him and knowing how smart he is and knowing how much he's trying to position himself in a certain way he's not going to like the fact that they've mentioned um you know london east end and you know um, stuff about virgin off-white already and being black in the first paragraph He's going to want within the next couple of seasons, next couple of years to really rid that into his intro and have him spoken about just as any other designer will get spoken about and not have those tropes of streetwear, leisure wear, norm wear, um, estates, all that sort of stuff, architecture, all labeled into his paragraphs and have people actually break down the work that he's actually doing. I'm sure that will be the thing. But again, you know, it's, a, it's an app description and isn't, doesn't go amiss. And it continues, his ambition to use the platform to set a positive example and lift the eyes of the posi possibilities of social change also marks Ross as belonging into a generation in london and beyond who are committed activists of one kind or another mm, i won't say activism in that regard but i get what they mean from staging his show in a vast ex-industrial eastern london venue to which he invited the public through the clothes to through to the clothes and accessories he took the colors of the cement and clay as metaphor to demonstrate how the basic wardrobe streetwear hoodie against streetwear already they mentioned hoodie trackpad and parker there was a grit on the floor and dust in the air references to metal electronic wiring concrete industrial tubing in the time of brexit ah, again a product of british kids go on our education he studied graphics and pro designer de Montfort. ross feels responsibility to redirect the collective narrative he said i started from hardship but i'm not in that place anymore i don't wish that to be celebrated i agree well done dude i want to focus on, mo on a more positive altruistic future i've done a study looking at the hype and poisoning of a cold war growing from four stockists to 165 in four years the brand is now positioning at a higher tier garment construction and develop it actually is a new price point for me but for me it's very key that we keep accessibility through the information and a brand puts out that's not just by approaching garments it's about opening the brand to the public i love that i want to ensure that there wasn't this conservative division that is often associated with bourgeoisie fashion which is true because the moment you get successful the moment you get more um, investment the more you start to um rise up the social rungs of the you know cultural elite in the uk you know we're mostly a classist society here in the uk the less you start to give a shit about people you left behind but some sometimes the marker of real character the marker of a real creative the marker of somebody that's really trying to uplift his community is this idea that they're always reaching back as they're climbing up the ladder always reaching back. i don't agree with the fact that some fans will be like oh no you need to be who you were before i love the cold war before i need to print t-shirts on t-shirts or needs to print graphics on random tees whatever and spray paint them no you want them to progress. You want the manufacturing, the production, the finish, the quality, the stock is, the, the collaboration to get better. But you also want the ability for you to buy the garments, the accessibility, the where the stores are located, where the pop-ups are in general, where the fashion shows are, what, what they're talking about to be something that you can relate to, i.e. him reaching back. It continues. Um, I want to ensure that there wasn't this conservative division that is often associated with bourgeoisie fashion that didn't um, seem liberal to me. So pushing forward um um it's incredibly important that there 
there's this circular form of communication. I want to incubate that discussion. He gave a personal insight into the meaning of the sculpture metalwork. There are clamped pieces of lead. My father's a Central Martins trained uh, stained glass artist. The only black one in that country. In the country. Oh, wow. Amazing. Inclusion, the activation, activity of talent. Da, da, da. Um, uh, the very generous new gen bursary given to myself in the Cold War has been redirected. So there's this idea of giving... That's not verbal, it's tangible, it's financial. I'm speaking boldly here, but I wish this to be an industry trend because the whole point as we grow is that we should feed back in. I want to encourage people from all other diasporas uh, to come into this space and to this kind of handshake to them and all kind of levels and peers there's benefit. Okay, awesome. Um, what did he say here? He made the surprise announcement that he had donated the BFS New Gen Sponsorship Money a previous size to an ex a Cold War intern. Wow, Eastwood Dancer, who has been inspired by his work and went on to study fashion and had his first presentation of the week. Fucking hell. Amazing, man. That's awesome. Again, actually speak louder than words. Well done, Samuel Ross, man. Fucking killer. Anyway, so he's an amazing dude, great human being. Let's see what the clothes are saying. But, 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 but these are the kind of leaders that we want, in it? Jesus Christ, we have to get behind. Um, anyway, protect Virgil and Sammy Ross at all costs. These are the guys that we need to protect at all costs, regardless of their intentions and their motives. If they're doing this in public and going out of their way to kind of, you know, surround themselves with people that look like and sound like us, we have to protect them at all costs. Anyway, so again, um, a, a far more polished look already. You can see from the first look, um, maybe a pivot away from their consumer base that they're used to kind of talking to maybe introducing more consumers maybe trying to buy, maybe trying to tap into a wider audience in general which i'm not um, i'm not opposed to and again i just goes go to show just how intelligent that team is and how they're identifying where they can kind of refine their vision and where they can kind of expand it to in that regard this is off look look one right you've got a jacket trousers some nice bag and some nice shoes and it continues here again. I like look two. What's my favorite looks? A couple of them. And the trainers, I think this is another good idea to kind of speak about in general. I think this kind of goes to show about level of intelligence. These shoes here, they're sort of like, um, they look like an upgrade of the Margella army boot, I'm going to say. The army, the canvas army, sh army shoe for the most part. So they look similar to that with like a clear um outsole kind of trans translucent outsole in gray again i think that's a cool idea because it's going to be an, an easy entry point for somebody that wants to buy into the brand for the older dude or for the other clientele just wants a piece that they can rock in other outfits will be amazing too they look fairly versatile logo less very monotone they're going to come in a variation of colors again a, a great choice to make in terms of what's available inside stores if they're priced well too they'll sell out like hotcakes this is my one the one that i thought that was the best this kind of um high desert boot similar to the boot you'd see with it etsy that dude etsy 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 whatever that brand is they've got a, a stacked there's a bit of sort of the similar sort of shape um again something that could easily be worn and loads of their things i'm sure it's something that he's has in his wardrobe that he's wanting to kind of upgrade and um, there's another dr martin's boot i think it's a, a 2976 has also been given the stack sole and it looks really really comfortable this looks like it's been vulcanized so it might not be as thick as a sole um kind of shows you off the side but again another cool aspect of it and also the raincoat that the kids wearing too the tones the colors you can definitely see that they're trying to appeal to a broader market this trainer here is very interesting and so are the belts this trainer is similar to the shoe that they did with um nike air force one so they've sort of taken the same sort of design elements and brought it in-house and made their own version similar to what uh phoebe filer did at Celine with her kind of version of the air force one it looks kind of similar but again updated maybe a different sort of fabrication um he's probably been able to do different things i'm not sure if they partnered with in terms of the production of the shoe it might be a completely a cold war project or something they've done with another brand but again a great idea and sitting on top of those and sitting underneath those trousers that just sit really well nice kind of crop trousers trousers a great jacket that'll look cool with most outfits some nice um, accessories in terms of belts that you can wear just again just really really clever in how they've done things they've kind of got a harness that's similar to maybe to leaks maybe a lot too similar to me and my liking but I like the tracksuit again the trainers are really well done um not much emphasis on the logo just done in a very clever way um you have here this kind and then again after all those looks that are very much um a modern take a, a contemporary take a more polished take something that could be worn by strangers that don't know what the brand is 
then you suddenly after those seven looks you've got boom you got what you're used to right the the quintessential a cold war look right loads of um um loads of modular pieces that can kind of be taken off and strapped again and put over here and changed around uh panels on the trousers and stuff so i like i like that again it goes to show just how intelligent those guys are and how, how they're thinking of what they think of the bigger picture in general and of course you know these guys know what they're talking about um so again, you got here and probably a more conventional Cold War look again. I don't know how that jacket is finished, but it looks fucking stunning. I love the pants too. They remind me of the, um, uh, well, not, not not the pants. Maybe the jacket does more so of the parachute pants from, is it uh, 99%? So again, taking cues on what's kind of going on now in the, on, in the kind of quote unquote trends, but also making his own spin on it. Um, again, a nice outfit here. This gray outfit is amazing. This model is really cool, by the way. I love. I, I I don't know if they know this, but they need to keep using this model that they keep using on their web web store. He's like in super super dark skin with braids. He looks so cool in the clothes in the clothes that they put online, especially some of the bright colors. Like, oof, it really makes the clothes pop. And again, it gives you an. It's just a nice different feel. Sort of, you know, the same old faces you see in, in in essence. You know, essence again. I'm a big fan of their online store and stuff, but it's the same kind of model. You know what I mean? Like, I love the little bit of a change. Same with the a Tres Bien and our legacy. They have a particular kind of model that they always use. That kind of like um, sh straggly Scandinavian art school kid look, right? And I like the fact that a cold will have their kind of avatar or their kind of you know person that they use. Their fit model so far. Again, really really cool stuff a nice jacket again here just again you can see the pivot that they've made in terms of trying to expand their customer base at to a wider audience again a nice kind of take of the parachute pants i'm not really a fan of the harness i think i've not really seen how they work really well in outfits personally for the most part but again i could be persuaded differently uh, maybe again it's a kind of upgrade on the helmet lang or the kind of margella you know that Margiela bra t-shirt from a while back ago but i don't know how that i think it will all look really well if it's kind of really tailored and kind of fitted on the body and maybe on a bigger dude like a givenchy like a ricardo t ricardo t givenchy model would maybe make it look better but i'm not too sure but over again like i said just really con really classic clean silhouettes nice looking materials i love the color palette as well some of the trench coats look sublime um, some of the great suits like this tracksuit here look number 24 is super again that 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 look could be sold season in season out no way uh, no hassle done really there a nice paneled uh, jacket trousers too that can look like they, they can be um, ripped they can be kind of zipped um, up here at the front I like the kind of front uh, split Similar to what Virgil's doing at Louis Vuitton. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I quite like it. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. The trainers are nice as well. I take on the Air Force One. A nice bag. Just easily done. I like this suit here. That reminds me a little bit of Isimiyaki. Not sure if those are like bike tread marks on the top of it. But that could easily be done into a suit. It would look really nice as well. Maybe in some lighter materials. Again, the shoe as well. Just really coolly done. You know, also they remind me. They remind me of those, those uncle shoes. My uncle used to wear. They're usually from Yoji Yamamoto or Comme des Garçons. You know, if you know, if you have uncles from Congo, then you know what, what, what the shoes they wear. But it reminds me of that kind of outfit, right? So maybe, yeah, Isimiyaki is probably a good thing to say around that kind of liking. And again, just really, really great colors and silhouettes overall. This is kind of cray greenish, isn't it? This kind of top here. Um, again, those shoes as well. Just great shoes. I think these shoes here are, are a collaboration with Converse. They've done really, really well. They don't look like a Converse shoe, but they are. So, yeah, I recommend you check them out. I think Coldwell did a great job, as per usual, on their runway shows. And I can't wait to see some of the stuff in store. And unlike other brands, some of the stuff actually comes online, right? They Most of it is going to be made available to buy because, you know, a Coldwell sells really well in store. So, I'm sure the buyers are going to be all over it. Like, this suit here is fucking gorgeous as well, isn't it? Some of the cold stuff is fucking beautiful. So yeah, big up a Sammy Ross. There he is at the end, barefooted, all in white, doing the damn thing for the for the boys out there. Well done. Let's move on, move on, move on. Actually, ah, sorry, let's move on, move on. What's next here? Um, Charles Jeffrey, two spring summer two thousand twenty as well. I'm a big fan of his. Um, a really cool dude. He shouldn't be cool, but he's a really nice guy. Most fashion people you meet are, you know, can be wankers and stuff. But I've met him a couple of times, and he's always been very nice and friendly to me. So that makes me a fan automatically <laughs> um, by proxy. I don't care. But yeah, he is also somebody that I feel like has made the transition from you know avant-garde conceptual to kind of commercial he's seen the avenues where he can make loads of money and really get his brand out there again because unfortunately for most avant-garde for most avant-garde 
the most kind of ephemeral out there designers they have to kind of get to that point where they can feed the masses so that they can feed into their creativity and their kind of personal projects a real hard balancing act i think the best person to do it out there at the moment at a high level is probably a rick owens right he's able to appeal to the goth ninja nerds the rick um owen loyalists and he's also able to appeal to the you know the footballer out there who wants to just wear his trainers on a night out or some shit and i think that's the way you have to really be kind of like you know purist of taurus right kind of the kind of virgil saying that he says but um charles jeffrey's done a really good job of doing that recently too and this show kind of feels like it as well um I love the theatrics of his show. I love the kind of John Galliano vibe that he's kind of always mustering up. It's very theatrical. He's always like front and center of his show. Sometimes he slips himself in kind of incognito. But in this respect, I think he's the opening look, reading a book. Maybe it's a poem, a short story with his signature beret and an, and an amazing tailored suit. As always, he's probably one of the best tailors of his generation at the moment or now out in the scene the way he cuts things just like out of this world there's no one really coming close to it and i just hope um over the next few seasons people are able to buy into it again i'm a big fan of it i think the last suits they did previously were some of the best suits i've seen some of the especially well i'm assuming come some coming from his scottish heritage some of the checkered or plaid suits were just beautiful and i think he started he'd done them again this season because i'm pretty sure they sold well last season um again look one is him kind of reading a short story poem again got straight away back into the suits they look fucking awesome probably a collaboration with an artist another suit as well so i'm assuming there's a a nod to what's been selling well in the side of stores great jumpers and knitwear that will do really well it's got a dress in here included another great suit double breasted high-waisted pant interesting shoes here which are collaboration with dr martin which look really interesting right i think they've got these little roll things that you staple into the shoe the derby that's really cool i like that i like that pattern a lot it reminds me of something that maybe Vivian Westwood would make. Again, I like that print on the jumper. It looks really nice. It's again, got the it's signature sort of um, beret, but kind of a bit enlarged, it looks like, on the top there. Right? Extended beret. I like the look of that with some panels and buttons on it. Um, that Those trousers look pretty cool. The makeup is insane, as per usual. Maybe this is a nod to David Bowie. I'm not too sure. Um, again, a nice red hat in look number 11. Oof, look number 12 looks exceptional crazy clown again this is okay so i'm assuming this is a collaboration with dr martin's coming out very soon i can't wait to see that charles jeffrey dr martin's collabo looks really interesting i like the little tops on the little swirls on top reminds me of Comme des Garçons. this jacket reminds me a bit of prada maybe prada 2015 i think or maybe one of them that kind of like preppy that preppy one remember that collection that was preppy where they had the, the shrunken up vet the shrunken um knitwear jumpers and stuff there was a jacket that looked similar to this in prada and i think Michi prada does that jacket quite often i'm not sure what it's called it's like a, a big trench massive boxy shape with usually like a colored um collar like bright fuchsias and stuff and different prints and sometimes it's got like a, a different sort of a plique or material on the cuffs on the inside but i'm pretty sure probably something similar but i like that i like the socks also i'd wear the hell out the socks with my rico and shorts yeah the socks are, or the socks are tight so fucking cool the jewelry looks really nice again great suits oh i like that skirt again i'm a big fan of charles jeffrey i think he's done this again shows that he's leaning more into the commercial end of things and trying to get his brand um out there and for the most part, it seems to have worked. Poncho, that suit looks incredible. Um, cropped, double-breasted, look number 21. Again, overall, loads of free tricks, loads of crazy stuff, but loads again. That that shirt here is going to sell like hotcakes. Um, Loverboy shirt with hearts all over it. That's going to sell because that's, that's in the same vein of the uh, Prada shirts that we're seeing everybody wearing nowadays and the other kind of whatever other brand that does the same thing studded um, beret yeah look look number 23 is definitely going to sell really well the jeans look really cool they remind me of they could they could be an, again a 99% right pair of jeans or a soloist jeans and um, got the Dr. Martin's collab boots there they'll do really well that entire look would do really well I'm pretty sure on the stores um again nice um more avant-garde look double denim look is gonna do great too that looks fucking awesome i love that wow that double denim look is awesome big fan of that again so yeah can't wait to see what this looks like in store um again nice uh, is it terry Cough or plaid whatever it's called but i like that again another great addition to the whole team charles jeffrey out here smashing it oh i love that t-shirt so again, including again, that's a suit that's probably gonna that's probably gonna be my favorite. Look number twenty thirty two. It's sort of shrunken and pulled in on the inside. 
Oh, looks fucking incredible there. Yeah, great suit that. So yeah, Charles, Charles Jeffrey smashed it. Two of my probably standouts of the whole London Fashion Week collection. There he is at the end, taking the applause, of course, as per usual. So that's an hour actually, isn't it? I don't want to waste too much time because I think my my memory might be full. But again, thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode number two zero eight. It's been a bit of an odd one, but thanks for sticking in there with me. I'll see you guys again tomorrow for an episode of the show. Um, for those of you who want to check out more stuff about me, check out my website, link below, actionzinger.com. Watching via YouTube, give me a like and subscribe. Listening via the podcast app, a five star review will go a long way to help people find my show. But until then, my friends, I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Peace out and take care.